All right, boys, welcome back. Uh, last video, we got this thing running um, for the first time in a while, and it ran fantastic. So, but we did learn that it needs to tune up, etc., etc., etc. So, what we're going to do today is we are going to get it running again, get it up to operating temperature. Um, I'll probably fast forward through most of that and uh or won't record it and then what we'll do is an engine tune-up but first things first uh since that was the first time it's run and got any real heat in the motor in like i don't know 40 years uh what we're gonna do is we want to check the fluids and make sure we don't have any cross contamination now i've looked in the radiator and let's see if i can get it get it on camera for you guys i don't know that it's gonna show up but I'm not sure if you can tell but it's down a little bit from where it was now I realize that that doesn't probably mean much to you uh, because you don't know where it was but I had it like right at the level of of this recess here so it was like kind of right at the flat and that's a little bit high um but you know it was the first time uh that it's really run and so i had it a little bit over full because i was thinking you know thermostats would open and blah 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 and i'm sure they did because it got right to temperature i mean we had 170 degrees in it so uh let me get the dipstick out here let me get you back on the stand we'll take a look at the oil see what it looks like we did add four gallons to it yesterday and it could still be low i didn't really check it again after that i knew there was just enough in it to um you know run it, it wouldn't wouldn't hurt it so what i'm curious about is i want to make sure that we don't have any oil or water in the oil is really my only concern at this point and it's still low which is good and show you what we got here i didn't wipe it off yet boys but the oil is absolutely beautiful still very good sign um so what we're gonna do just give her a wipe It's in the exact spot that it was yesterday when I looked at it after uh, after we filled it, which is wild. It's like right in between half and full, and um, it's pretty weird actually because uh, that's where it was before I added the four gallons. It was like right in that exact spot, and then I just I added makeup oil because we filled the filters and bled the lube refiner. And it ended up being like the exact same amount of oil, exact same spot on the dipstick, which I just find kind of funny. So, um, what I'm going to do off camera is I got my ratchet. And what I'm going to do is just crack the drain plug and make sure there's nothing crazy going on. Uh, because I would hate like hell to come this far and then knock the bearings out of this thing so we're just gonna do that quick and then I'll bring it back perfect freaking oily happy report nothing but oil on the dips or on the drain plug come out so ready to fire this old girl up again um, I'm gonna tilt the cab first and then we will uh, fire it up and let it run for a little while I will get the you know, it's not really a cold start because it's summertime, but it's probably in the 60s here. So, uh, be the first, like, kind of semi-cold start 40-some years. Uh, 
but I'm real curious to see how it starts after sitting overnight because we don't have that uh, return line put down to the tra in town, down to the bottom of the tank. Remember the tube was busted off, and I still haven't gotten one of those yet. So uh, I'm real curious to see if it lost its prime overnight. So we'll we'll discover that together. Hang tight. Okay, fellas. Well, we're about ready to fire up. There was only one hiccup uh, tilting the cab, and that was at the. <laughs> Back side of the cab, where the cutout is for the shifter pad. When it tilted, it grabbed the emergency stop lever and pulled it, so the flap shot. So I just reset that. It's probably a good thing I didn't lift it while it was running. Um, so now we're ready to fire it up, I think. So I think we can do that. Let me just see. Out of gear. Close the shutdown. Give her all the way. that fired right up perfect so a couple things i'm noticing off the rip it's a little smoky but it's not bad it's a lot better than it has been and more importantly that blow by that we had yesterday is gone so what that most likely means is we had a little bit of a stuck ring from setting for that amount of time and it's come back now with a little heat in the motor god willing anyway smoke that was on this bank is gone too, which is perfect. Might turn out to be a really good motor. The other smoke that you see, not super worried about just yet. Uh, a lot of that can change with the tune-up. So I'm not gonna concern myself and get all crazy. Friggin' air leak is killing me. It's making all sorts of noise, so we're gonna end up doing them airlines where I'm pretty sure they go up into the camp and up into under the doghouse, and that that flap that opens there, the hinge is seized on it. So I haven't been really messing with it. I've soaked it like two or three times now, but I think it's gonna require a little bit more invasive of a procedure than that. So that's what's holding me up there. We're back when we uh, get in a tuna. Hello, guys. We're still running here. A little update. If you look in there, you see there's no air pressure light on on the dash. Yeah, so when I did the oil line into the cab, I 
this junction block down here at the bottom, there's actually, uh, where is it? This line here comes into this auxiliary tank. And that, I had left it disconnected because I needed to disconnect it to get to one of the other lines. So it actually built enough air to turn the light off. I think it would release the brakes, but I gotta be able to put the cab down to do that. And right now, it's more important that I do what I'm trying to do. Uh, it's slobbering pretty good today. Bleeding pretty good today. So we'll get a look at it. See if it cleans up any when uh, when we get the tune up done. But uh, while I was waiting for it to warm up, I thought that was pretty cool, so I figured I'd give you an update. Alright boys, welcome back. We got the valve covers off and we got the engine barred over so that the low speed weights are in the horizontal position. Let's see if you can see that. And you can see here how you do this is you take your special tool, this thing, it's a governor wedge, and you put it in there and you wedge it in between the cur the tapered side goes towards the riser, which is Actually, I think I have that backwards. I think the tapered side goes this way. Whatever. So now we are jammed at, it doesn't, we're jammed with that weight in its maximum position. I'm not sure if you can see that. There you go, that's a good shot of it. And then what you're looking for is you're gonna check your gap here, which is the gap between the low speed spring and the plunger, or the low speed plunger and whatever you call it, and we are, that is 10 thou. About 10 thou is what we got. You feel it just kind of So if it's incorrect, the spec is uh, between 3 thou and 19 thou. And then you reset, if it's wrong, you reset it to 8. So I always check it with an 8 first and see where we're at. Let me, uh, hang on. Ouch, that's hot. So that is 100% 10 thou. I just wanted to make sure that I was actually in between there because there's a little bit of a ridge and you, sometimes it's hard to tell. So the gap is perfect on this. I'm not gonna touch it. Um, 10 thou is just about mint. So now what we could do is get on to uh, setting our racks. Uh, we'll put the, the cover back on and set the racks to balance each other and we'll set each individual injector but you always want to check your gap first because uh you would reset that um if you if you do have to make a gap change what i'm trying to say is if you do have to make a gap change you're going to end up having to reset your racks anyway so you always do the governor gap first and you do it with the idle set at where you want the engine to idle so the spec six says 600 but if for some reason you want yours to idle at 550 or 650 you set the gap there um a lot of guys bump it up a little bit for oil pressure reasons um i see no reason to do that on this this thing had like 15 20 pounds of oil pressure at idle and the idle is it sounds wicked low anyway i didn't the, the tachometer is not hooked up so i can't i can't just verify that for you um which we might actually just just hook it up here real quick um if it's a dashboard thing when I, next time i put the cab down i'll look so we could set the we could put the cover back on the governor. I'm gonna just 
put you on pause for that and then we'll come back and we'll do the uh balancing the racks etc together so hang tight all right guys we're all set up on the other side what you can't see is the buffer screws backed out our idle screws backed out and if you look close somebody has broken the idle screw so we're going to replace that when we're done um but it's not really a big deal for what we're doing right now so let me just show you something we're gonna lock this in full fuel like that and now i'll take a look at this it even moves in and out a little bit we're nowhere near full fuel on that one on this side of the engine Nowhere near, you can see it. Wild. So this is totally wrong. We, uh... I just thought I'd show you that before we got started, but... I'm gonna, I gotta find a spot for the camera yet. So that's what I'm gonna do next, and then we'll get you squared away. Alright, fellas. We're back. Um... So this is the driver's side, cylinder one here, um, that's where you start, so, and part of that is also you have to disconnect the uh, passenger side or the right bank control tube, which I've already done. So still way off so first things first fellas we're gonna we back off all of our all of our rods for all the injectors these are way off boys Finally, we'll do this one. So I like to turn it in. Okay, so you guys can actually see that finger. I'm only gonna do the one on camera and then we'll time lapse the rest. So you see that control rack moving there, I'm moving the finger in towards the injector. So you turn it in and you'll watch it when you get, you see it twist? You see it twist? That's what you want, that's full fuel. And then you're feeling in the screwdriver for a step up in effort. And once you feel it right there, you are at full fuel. And you're locked in. So then you alternately tighten each of the screws. Just a minuscule amount each time. And then come down here and feel this tight. You see, I can't move it with my finger. That's what you're looking for. And if you watch, let me see if I can see that on the camera again. So watch that carefully now. See it push down and spring back? Watch, it springs back. There's spring tension on that inside the injector. It's not really a spring, but there's tension on it inside the injector. That is actual, <clears throat> that's true full fuel. I believe it's, it's showing up on camera. And so that's what you're looking for for every single injector. Now, if you go and you do the next injector, 
in this row. Let's see, when you go and do number two here, number two has to do the exact same thing that number one did. And if it does, then you need to come back to number one and double check and make sure you didn't back this one off because by tightening this one, the following injector too much, it can physically change, it binds this rack and it physically changes the setting on number one. So you need to go through very methodically and it's, it's just all feel and it's like double, triple, quadruple checking your work. Like you, it's just, for every one you set, and that's why it, it takes a little bit for these 12s, every one you set, you need to double check your work on the previous injector and make sure you didn't go too far. So uh, now that one's set, I am gonna switch over to a time lapse and we'll continue on. Okay, boys. Well, I I just thought I would make mention. I forgot about it. Um, the book tells you to start here with the other rack disconnected. Set this one and then disconnect this one and go over and set the other one and i don't do it that way because the racks aren't disconnected when you're going down the road so what i do is i leave this side connected i do this one which you watch me do and then the very first thing i do is i go over to the other rack walk over there and i set that one and then the reason I do it that way is in my brain, it ensures that the racks are exactly the same. There's no guessing when you put the pin back in. You can see the side's still tight. And you can see, let's see if you can see it down there. Tight, it doesn't move. And it, it's got the spring with the screwdriver like it's supposed to. So I just thought I would make mention of that. And then, like I said, once you set this one, Go over and make sure your other side stays uh, springy, like like stays tight. You don't want you don't want to back off your setting on this rack. So that's just how I do it. I think that works the best, but whatever. So let's uh, let's get going here. Fellas, one side done. Notice tight, doesn't move. Can you see that? Tight, tight. You're tight all the way up, trust me. So, uh, next is, um, Next we come over here and we do this side. And as we stated before, we've already done injector number one, which is still tight. So we know we're doing our job. We'll go through tighten this, uh, this bunch of them. I think I have a good spot for you guys, so I'll put you on a time lapse, we'll get her done. Fellas, tight, 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 tight. Almost like we know what we're doing. So now, 
I'll just come over here and double check this side, which I haven't done yet. I like did this real time with you guys. We're still tight. I'll just double check this back one here. It's still tight. So that's setting a rack on a V12 with yours too, truly. So uh, yeah, next up we'll fire it up. Um, we gotta put our idle back in. Shit, I gotta replace that little doodly do. So let me go get one of them. I gotta dig one out of them, one of the parts governors or something around here. And uh, you know, I'll come back with y'all and we'll uh, run that idle back in and we'll fire it up for the first time after doing this. And you'll be able to see the difference on the temp gun, I guarantee it. Stay tuned. All right, well, I think we're all set here. So I should be able to fire it up. I don't know if it's gonna idle or not yet. The buffer screw is still backed out. Helps if you remove your socket from the engine.
All right. Valve covers are on. See how the smoke is. Much better. Now, I didn't set. I didn't check exhaust valve clearances or injectors heights. Uh, those should be done cold. So we'll do them another time, no big deal. difference is uh can be within idle calibration on the injector as well here's the main important part the bed nuts even now and it sounds even and it sounds way better it did not sound right before do it for us for this video thanks for uh thanks for watching hopefully you learned something on setting a rack i'm um, not sure i don't think i've really ever seen or done such an in-depth uh overview on it especially not on a v engine uh, so hopefully this helps somebody out uh worst case we got to play with the cab over for a little while and it runs a lot better so that's a win um next I guess we're gonna chase some airlines probably like i said that'll do it for this one thanks for watching uh, stay tuned there'll be a bunch more see you soon